Welcome to the 2023 NCLEX Pharmacological and Parental Therapies Practice Test. This test will have 40 questions with explained answers that will help you prepare for the test. Be sure to resuscitate the like button by turning it white. Question 1. You're providing education on medications to a patient that you're discharging. What is the best way to be sure that the patient has understood the education provided? A. The patient repeats the information back to you. B. The patient writes down the information. C. The patient takes a picture of his discharge paperwork. D. The patient asks his wife if she understood the information as well. The correct answer is A. The patient repeats the information back to you. The best way to ensure that this patient understands the education provided is to have them repeat it back to you. Just because they write information down, take a picture of the medications or discharge paperwork, or have a family member there does not mean that they understand the education provided. Question 2. You're the home health nurse providing medication education to a 67-year-old male that lives alone. The patient states that he sometimes forgets to take his medications. How will you know that the patient knows how to take his medications? A. You check his pill box each time you visit. B. You write down his medications and the times he should take them. C. You count his pills each time you visit. D. The patient takes his pills in front of you and explains when to take each medication that he is prescribed. The correct answer is D. The patient takes his pills in front of you and explains when to take each medication that he is prescribed. While checking the patient's pill box is important to ensure that he is taking his medications, the best way to know that the patient understands how to take his medications is if he correctly demonstrates and explains how he is supposed to take them. Counting the patient's pills is not necessary. Question 3. A teenage patient is admitted to the ICU for overdosing on acetaminophen. You know the antidote for acetaminophen is what? A. Premagen. B. Protamine sulfate. C. Vitamin K. D. Acetylcysteine. The correct answer is D. Acetylcysteine. When a patient has overdosed on acetaminophen, the antidote is acetylcysteine. Acetylcysteine is used to assist avoid or decrease the liver damage brought on by an acetaminophen overdose. Question 4. A nurse is caring for a patient that is an alcoholic. She has been admitted to the hospital and will not be able to drink alcohol. What medication does the nurse anticipate the doctor prescribing for this patient to help with withdrawal symptoms? A. Chlordiazepoxide. B. Naltrexone. C. Ondansetron, D. Methadone. The correct answer is A. Chlordiazepoxide. Chlordiazepoxide, Librium, is often given to patients to keep them from experiencing the side effects of alcohol withdrawal. Naltrexone is often prescribed to help patients not crave the taste of alcohol. It lessens their pleasure of drinking alcohol. Ondansetron is for nausea slash vomiting symptoms. Methadone is often given to patients addicted to opioids to lessen withdrawal symptoms. Question 5. The nurse is caring for a patient who has been receiving dilaudid 0.5 mg every three hours, scheduled for post-op surgical pain. The nurse is handing off report and notices that the patient's O2 sat drops to 88%. The patient's chest is not moving and the patient becomes unresponsive. Which pharmacological therapy do you anticipate needing? A. Epinephrine. B. Naloxone. C. Diazepam. D. Naltrexone. The correct answer is B. Naloxone. The reversal agent for opioids such as Dilaudid is Naloxone. This patient is experiencing signs of opioid overdose with decreased respiratory rate and O2 sat. Question 6. You're giving furosemide via IV push. You know to push it 20 mg per minute to prevent which clinical side effect? A. Tinnitus. B. Halitosis. C. Oliguria. D. Anuria. The correct answer is a. Tinnitus. In order to reduce blood pressure and treat edema brought on by water retention, loop diuretics like furosemide, Lasix, and bumetanide, Bumex, are frequently administered. However, loop diuretics are known to possibly lead to hearing loss and ear ringing. For this reason, furosemide should be pushed slowly to prevent tinnitus. Question 7. A patient is prescribed ferrous sulfate for her chronic anemia. Which of the following medications does the patient need to be educated on? A. Calcium carbonate. B. Salicylic acid. C. Ascorbic acid. D. Thiamine. 
The correct answer is A. Calcium carbonate. Calcium carbonate, Tums, interfere with absorption of iron. For this reason, when a patient is taking ferrous sulfate, they should take calcium carbonate as far away from the dose of ferrous sulfate as possible. At least one hour before ferrous sulfate dose or two hours after ferrous sulfate dose. Question 8. The MD orders D5W2L to infuse over 12 hours. What is the rate of infusion? A. 125 mlHr. B. 254 mlHr. C. 133 mlHr. D. 167 mlHr. The correct answer is D. 167 mlHr. In order to obtain the rate of infusion, the IV fluid should be changed to ml. 2L equals 2,000 ml. 2,000 ml divided by 12 hours equals 166.67 mlHr. The IV pump should be set to 167 mlHr. Question 9. The nurse is caring for a child post-op day 1 from a tonsillectomy. The patient has ibuprofen ordered as needed. The order is for 150 mg Q6 hours PRN for pain. Available is 100 mg 5 ml. How many ml will the nurse administer? A. 5 ml. B. 2. 5 ml. C. 10 ml. D. 7.5 ml. The correct answer is D. 7.5 ml. The available dose of ibuprofen is 100 mg 5 ml. The patient needs 150 mg. 100 mg, 5 ml, 150 mg, x 750 mg equals 5 x 750 mg divided by 100 x equals 7.5 ml. Question 10. A patient just received Humalog 3 units for a glucose of 233 at 8 a.m. When should you anticipate this patient needs to start eating his breakfast? A. Before 9 a.m. B. 8.15 a.m. C. 8.45 a.m. D before 9.30 a.m. The correct answer is B, 8.15 a.m. Humalog is a fast-acting insulin. If the patient was given Humalog at 8 a.m., they should eat within 15 to 30 minutes. Therefore, B is the correct option. Question 11. A patient who is three hours post-op from a hysterectomy is ordered 7.5 mg morphine sulfate Q2 HRPRN for pain. The pharmacy sends a vial constituted to 5 mg 10 ml. How many ml will the nurse give? A. 15 ml. B. 10 ml. C. 5 ml. D. 7.5 ml. The correct answer is A. 15 ml. Available is 5 mg 10 ml, but ordered is 7.5 mg 5 mg 10 ml. 7.5 mg. X 75 mg equals 5 x 75 divided by 5 equals 15 x equals 15 ml. Question 12. The physician orders anoxaparin sodium for a patient who is chair fast. At what angle do you anticipate injecting this medication for a patient with a BMI of 23? A. 45 degrees. B. 90 degrees. C. 180 degrees. D. 30 degrees. The correct answer is A. 45 degrees. A patient with a BMI of 23 is within a normal weight range. Enoxaparin, Lovenox, is injected into the sub-Q tissue. Therefore, it should be given at a 45-degree angle. Question 13. A mother of a 20-month-old toddler tells you, if the doctor would have prescribed him an antibiotic last week for this cold, he has, we wouldn't be back here again. What is the best response to the mother? A. I understand your concern. I will ask the doctor about an antibiotic. B. Would you like me to suggest an antibiotic today? C. Antibiotics do not work for viruses like the common cold. D. It is not necessary for your child to receive an antibiotic. The correct answer is C. Antibiotics do not work for viruses like the common cold. It is important for the nurse to educate the mother that antibiotics do not heal viruses. Option D dismisses the mother's concern for her child. Question 14. You're caring for a patient on Dilantin for seizures. Which of the following is the most important information to educate the patient on? A. This medication must be taken in the morning. B. Be sure to take this on an empty stomach. C. Do not abruptly stop taking this medication. D. Be sure to lie down in a dark area after taking this medication. The correct answer is C. Do not abruptly stop taking this medication. It is very important to educate patients on seizure medications like Dilantin. 
Explaining to the patient that taking this medication abruptly can cause worse seizures is very important. Question 15. A patient is receiving IV vancomycin 1,500 mg daily for cellulitis of his right leg. The patient's vancomycin is scheduled for 9 a.m. At which of the following times will the nurse draw a vancomycin trough? A. 8.30 a.m. B. 8.30 p.m. C. 9.30 a.m. D. 9.30 p.m. The correct answer is A. 8.30 a.m. A vancomycin trough is a lab value to assess the lowest amount of vancomycin in the blood. It is often used to assess whether the medication is at a therapeutic level in the patient's body. It is drawn right before the next due dose. If the medication is due at 9 a.m., then the trough should be drawn at 8.30 a.m. and no earlier than 8 a.m. Question 16. A child is ordered cephalexin for an ear infection. Which of the following medications would alert the nurse to clarify orders with the doctor if found on the patient's allergy list? A. Penicillin B. Vancomycin C. Gentamicin D. Augmentin The correct answer is A. Penicillin The antibiotic class known as penicillins includes amoxicillin. You are more prone to develop an allergy to a class of medicines known as cephalosporins, of which cephalexin is a part, if you have a penicillin allergy. Patients who are allergic to penicillin should not use cephalexin. The doctor's order should be clarified with the prescribing physician. Question 17. A patient is prescribed warfarin for a recent blood clot. Which of the following foods should the patient be educated on to not consume? A. Lettuce. B. Eggs. C. Milk. D. Olives. The correct answer is A. Lettuce. Patients on warfarin should not consume foods high in vitamin K because vitamin K significantly reduces the effects of warfarin. Leafy greens such as lettuce are high in vitamin K. Question 18. A patient is ordered atorvastatin for his high cholesterol. Which of the following should the patient be educated to avoid? A. Bananas. B. Eggs. C. Grapefruit. D. Milk. The correct answer is C. Grapefruit. When a patient is taking atorvastatin, they should avoid grapefruit and grapefruit juice. Grapefruit can exacerbate the effects of atorvastatin and cause hypotension and atorvastatin toxicity. Question 19. A patient is ordered simvastatin for his high cholesterol. When is the best time of day for the patient to take this medication? A. Before 6 a.m. B. At bedtime. C. At noon. D. After lunch. The correct answer is B. At bedtime. Most statin drugs are given in the evening at bedtime. This is due to the cholesterol-producing enzyme being more active at night. Additionally, certain statins have a short half-life, or the time it takes for half of a medication to exit your body. Question 20. A patient is ordered levothyroxine sodium for her thyroid. What is the best time of the day for the patient to take this medication? A. Before breakfast. B. After lunch. C. Before bedtime. D late afternoon. The correct answer is A. Before breakfast. Levothyroxine is best taken before breakfast each morning. Levothyroxine is absorbed in the small intestine, where it is absorbed between 70% and 80%. To avoid food or other prescriptions interfering with levothyroxine's intestinal absorption, it is generally agreed that the medication should be taken before breakfast. Question 21. A patient asks for a PRN pain pill before dinner. Once the nurse goes to the patient's bedside, the patient states, You know what? I should wait to take that right before I go to sleep so that I can sleep well with no pain. What is the best intervention by the nurse? A. Return the pill to the dispensing medication cabinet. B. Leave the pill at the bedside for the patient to take. C. Put the pill in your scrub pocket to scan later. D. Give it to the charge nurse to dispose of. The correct answer is A. Return the pill to the dispensing medication cabinet. Different hospitals have different protocols on how to discard controlled substances. The best option here is to return the pill to the medication cabinet. Medicine cabinets like the Pyxis allows the nurse to add a controlled substance back to the cabinet by scanning the pill and entering the correct count. Some hospitals have protocols that if a controlled substance is taken out of the medication cabinet, it must be destroyed and wasted with another RN if not given to the patient. Always follow your hospital's protocol. Question 22. 
How far away from the umbilicus should inoxaparin sodium be administered? A. 2.5 inches. B. 5 centimeters. C. 5 inches. D. 2.5 centimeters. The correct answer is B. 5 centimeters. Inoxaparin, Lovenox, should be administered at a 45 degree angle, 5 centimeters, 2 inches, from the umbilicus. The injection sites should be rotated much like insulin administration. Question 23. Which of the following should blood products always be administered with? A. 0.9% sodium chloride. B. 0.45% sodium chloride. C. Lactated ringers. D. Dextrose 5% NS. The correct answer is A. 0.9% sodium chloride. Blood products of any kind may only ever be administered with 0.9% sodium chloride. The main concern for using any other IV solution is the event of an emboli. Question 24. A home health nurse is using a gravity system to administer an IV solution to a patient. The orders are for 500 ml over 4 hours. The drop factor is 15 GTS ml. What is the drip rate that the nurse should set? Round to the nearest whole number. A. 62 GT min. B. 16 GT min. C. 31 GATS min. D. 50 GATT slash min. The correct answer is C. 31 GATTS min. Total volume, ml, divided by time, mines times drop factor, GTs ml. 500 ml slash 240 mins times 15 GT slash ml 2.08333x15 equals GTs min x equals 31.24 or 31 GATS min. Question 25. A diabetic patient who has been on Glargine at bedtime for several years has had Humalog ordered by his endocrinologist due to his high glucose ranges during the day. The patient asks, Can I just combine my Humalog at dinner with my Glargine so that I don't have to take two separate shots? What is the best response to this patient? A. That will be okay. All insulin can be mixed. B. I will ask the endocrinologist, but I don't see why not. C. These two insulins should never be mixed. D. Sure, that will save you two pokes. The correct answer is C. These two insulins should never be mixed. Insulin glargine should never be mixed with any other type of insulin. The nurse should educate the patient on not mixing these two medications and that he will have to give himself two different injections. Question 26. The physician orders clindamycin 300 mg tiad times 10 days. At what time should the medications be administered? A. 600, 1200, 1800. B. 900, 1400, 2200. C. 600, 1400, 2200. D. 900, 1500, 2100. The correct answer is C. 600, 1400, 2200. When a medication is scheduled for TID three times daily, one should think 24 hours divided by three doses. So the medication should be given approximately Q8 HRS. The correct schedule above is C. Question 27. A nurse is educating a mom on giving her toddler albuterol with a spacer. Which of the following is an important education component to provide for the mom? A. Be sure to have him rinse his mouth out after each dose. B. Have him drink lots of water after each dose. C. He cannot eat within one hour after administration. D. Be sure he waits 15 minutes between each puff. The correct answer is A. Be sure to have him rinse his mouth out after each dose. It is important to educate parents on having their child rinse their mouth out immediately after doses of albuterol. This decreases the risk for the child to get oral thrush as a result of albuterol. Question 28. You're educating a patient on taking furosemide. Which of the following statements by the patient indicates the patient's understanding? A. I should eat bananas and green vegetables every day. B. I need to add extra salt to everything that I eat. C. I should take this medication when I wake up and before I go to bed. D. I should let the doctor know immediately if I am urinating too much. The correct answer is A. I should eat bananas and green vegetables every day. Loop diuretics like furosemide deplete the body of potassium and sodium. It is important to educate patients on their dietary needs. Bananas and green vegetables are a good source of potassium. While a patient's sodium level is depleted, they do not need to add extra salt to their diet. Question 29. A nurse is performing a medication reconciliation with a patient who came to the ED for severe epigastric pain. 
The nurse asks the patient about all over-the-counter OTC medications. Which of the following medications should the nurse educate the patient on holding? A. Ibuprofen. B. Docusate sodium. C. Calcium carbonate. D. Cetirizine. The correct answer is A. Ibuprofen. The majority of NSAID adverse effects are digestive issues. They most often consist of indigestion-related symptoms and stomach inflammation. In extreme circumstances, NSAIDs might irritate your stomach's lining to the point where an ulcer develops. The nurse should educate the patient on holding ibuprofen. Question 30. The physician wrote an order for digoxin 0.25 mg PO bid. The pharmacy sends digoxin 0.125 mg tablets. How many tablets will the patient need for the day? A, 2, B, 4, C, 6, D, 8. The correct answer is B, 4. Digoxin 0.25 mg is needed. On hand is digoxin 0.125 mg slash tab 0.25 mg divided by 0.125 mg equals 2 tabs. The medication is scheduled bid twice daily, so the patient will need 4 tabs for the day. Question 31. A patient is being seen at an urgent care for a severe cold. The physician suggests that he get a cough syrup with dextromethorphan in it. What does this medication do for the patient? A. Helps suppress his cough. B. Helps expel any fluid in the lungs. C. Thin out any secretions. D. Open up the nasal passages. The correct answer is A. Helps suppress his cough. In over-the-counter cold and cough medications, Dextromethorphan acts as a cough suppressant. Dextromethorphan is primarily used as a cough suppressant to temporarily relieve cough brought on by minor throat and bronchial irritation, such as is frequently seen in association with the flu and the common cold, or from inhaled particle irritants. Chronic cough is also treated with dextromethorphan at higher dosages. Question 32. A patient with chronic opioid use has had to increase her dosage to obtain the same pain-relieving effects. What is this referred to as A. Addiction B. Tolerance C. Threshold increase D. Metabolism The correct answer is B. Tolerance Opioid tolerance is defined by a decreased receptivity to an opioid agonist, such as morphine, and is often exhibited by the requirement of using higher dosages to get the desired effect. Regular opioid medication usage causes the brain to adapt resulting in a gradual decrease in the effects of a given dose of the drug. When an individual develops a tolerance to opioids, they may require higher doses of the medicine to have the same benefits or may only experience partially as intended. Question 33. A patient is admitted to the ER with DKA, diabetic ketoacidosis. The ER physician orders a hypotonic solution. Which of the following is a hypotonic solution? A. 0.9% sodium chloride, B. Lactated ringers, C. 0.45% sodium chloride, D. Dextrose 5% in water, D5W. The correct answer is C. 0.45% sodium chloride. In order to aid in the elimination of bodily waste, hypotonic IV fluids are intended to transport fluid from the circulation into the cells and tissues. In other words, they're frequently employed to assist patients in preventing dehydration. An example of a hypotonic solution is 0.45% sodium chloride. Question 34. A patient in the ICU is on a heparin drip and begins to show toxicity signs. The nurse knows which of the following is the antidote for heparin. A. Vitamin K. B. Protamine sulfate. C. Promethazine. D. Flumazenil. The correct answer is B. Protamine sulfate. Heparin side effects can be reversed by a drug called protamine sulfate. It is especially used to treat low molecular weight heparin overdose, heparin overdose, and to undo the effects of heparin following childbirth and heart surgery. To administer it, a vein is injected. Usually within five minutes, the effects start to manifest. The massive dosage of heparin that is frequently given during some procedures, notably heart surgery when anticoagulation is required to avoid clot formation, is reversed with the use of protamine sulfate. Question 35. The primary care physician has ordered a patient Cytolopram for mild anxiety. Which of the following statements by the patient indicates that she understands the information provided to her about this medication? A. I will feel better in a few days. B. If I skip a dose, I will just take a double dose. C. 
It may take weeks to months for this medication to be helpful. D. If I am not feeling better in a week, I will call the physician and have him prescribe something different. The correct answer is C. It may take weeks to months for this medication to be helpful. Before citalopram starts to reduce symptoms, it might take one to two weeks. You often don't get the full effects for four to six weeks. This is due to the fact that citalopram levels take around a week to increase in your body before your body adjusts and becomes accustomed to it, which takes another several weeks. Question 36. Which of the following is important when educating a patient on digoxin? A. Take this medication one hour before meals or two hours after meals. B. Take this medication with milk. C. Take this medication before getting out of bed in the morning. D. Take this medication at least 15 minutes after taking an antacid. The correct answer is A. Take this medication one hour before meals or two hours after meals. Food can decrease the absorption of digoxin, and it is important that a constant amount of digoxin stays in the blood to remain therapeutic. Option A is the answer because taking the medication on an empty stomach is beneficial. Question 37. A patient has an order for 25 mg metaprolol ordered at this time. The LVN takes the patient's vital signs, and they are as follows. BP 96-57-HR 78-Temp 98. 7 slash RR18. What actions should the LVN take? A. Hold the medication and report the findings to the RN. B. Give the medication and recheck vital signs in one hour. C. Give the medication and let the RN know the vital signs. D. Hold the medication. The correct answer is A. Hold the medication and report the findings to the RN. The patient is experiencing hypotension and should not be given a beta blocker at this time. Option D is not correct because the LVN should report the findings to the RN. Question 38. A patient is taking phenylzine for her anxiety and depression after her husband passed away. Which of the following should the patient be instructed to avoid? A. Cheese. B. Potatoes. C. Carbonated soda. D. Orange juice. The correct answer is A. Cheese. Phenylzine, Nardil, is a Mayo-I medication that should not be given with foods high in tyramine. Most cheeses are high in tyramine. Question 39. A patient in the ICU is on a Cartizem drip. The order is for 0.25 mg slash kg slash hr. The patient weighs 189 pounds. What rate will you set the Cartizem drip for? 21.5 mg slash kg slash hr. A. 52 mg slash kg slash hr. B. 21.5 mg slash kg slash hr. C. 47.25 mg slash kg slash hr d 104 mg slash kg slash hr the correct answer is b 21.5 mg slash kg slash hr the patient weighs 189 lbs divided by 2.2 equals 85.9 kg 0.25 mg times x 85.9 kg hr equals 21.47 mg slash kg slash hr or 21.5 mg slash kg slash hr question 40. Which of the following is not included in the five rights of medication? A. Right root. B. Right time. C. Right reason. D. Right patient. The correct answer is C. Right reason. The five rights of medications does not include the right reason. The five rights of medication include the right patient, right root, right time, right drug, right dose. Thank you for watching this video. We hope you enjoyed it. Click the first link in the description to take the free NCLEX practice test. Also, check out these videos that can help you with your future studies. Don't forget to resuscitate the like button and subscribe to our channel. And please share this video with your fellow nursing friends.